Okay, I'm back now. And so what we did last time was we derived the equation describing the velocity of a satellite in an elliptical orbit, where g is the universal gravitational constant, big M is the, the mass of the object, of the, of the object that's being orbited around the planet, and g and m are the same here, and r is the distance between the point between the satellite and the center of the planet, and a is the semi-major axis, which we talked about in the last video. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to use, we're going to verify this equation experimentally using a 3D realistic spaceflight simulator called Orbiter 2010, which is a, an open source software um, distributed and um, made by a man who is um, quite passionate about orbital mechanics. And um, so that's what we're going to use today. And so I'm going to go ahead and launch the program. And actually what we're going to do is we're going to record va values of the R the distance we are from the center of the planet, and we're going to record values of v, and we're going to put them onto a spreadsheet, which is the one right here, which I've already prepared for the conversion factors and all of that. And we're going to try to create a model to see what the model is going to look like. And looking at our equation, going back to our equation, what do we think it's going to look like? Considering r is our variable right here, and everything else is a constant, we should expect a power relate, an inverse power relationship, something on the order of 10 of, of x to the negative 1 half. So that's what we're hoping we'll get. That's where, where our hypothesis at this point. So let's go ahead and record some values using the, the program, which I'll walk through everything with you on that one. So here's the program, Orbiter 2010. This is the main display of, uh, of the, the pilot's um, view. This is our beautiful space plane right here. This is the Earth. I zoom out a little bit, a whole bunch. You can see the Earth. That looks more like an Earth now. So it's actually quite a decent program in regards to its graphics and all of that. But back to the actual purpose of this. Just go back to our main view. So this is our main view here, and the most important detail that you guys should be concerned about is the lower left-hand display here. This is called the Orbit MFD. MFD stands for Multifunctional Display. The MFD here tells us everything about our orbit. The gray circle right below the green circle here is the surface of the Earth. The green circle right above it is the, our orbit trajectory. So if this green circle was at any point below the gray circle, that means we're, he we're headed for a crash landing towards the Earth. So that will be very, very bad. Thankfully, our green circle is above the gray circle, so we're not headed anywhere near the Earth at this point. We're just following around the Earth right now. Let's look at these, let's look at these numbers a bit closely. In fact, I can see them a bit better. Yeah, here we go. So here we have the SMA value. SMA you may be able to guess, is the semi-major axis. The semi-major axis is very important to us because it's one of the variables in our equation. Right below it is the semi-minor axis, which is not important to us, but look, it's exactly the same value, which means that we're almost completely circular in this, in this orbit. But not, not entirely circular, though. We still have no, circ no, no orbit can be completely circular, theoretically. It could be, but it's, um, it's very difficult to do so. And then right below it are the two most are two very important values to us, not necessarily for the equation, but um, just important for us because we learned about it in the last video. This is the PER, which tells us the perigee, and the distance, the perigee, which is the distance from the the orbit to the from the closest point of the or, of the elliptical orbit to the center of the planet. And then right below it we have apogee, which is the which is the the distance that is farthest from the planet on the elliptical orbit. And then even below that is RAD, which is the, which is the um, radius, or the distance at any, at any given point. So these PER and APR values are constant. They should not be changing, whereas the, rad, the, the RAD value gives us our distance at any point in the orbit. So if I speed up time right now, that value should change ever so slightly because we're still slightly elliptical. So I'm speeding up time right now. It's not changing that much because as you can see, our PER, our perigee, and our apogee are almost exactly the same. They're off by just 
0.001, so it's going to be difficult to see how our radius changed. But to help us understand this a little bit better, oh, there's one more value that's very important to us, which is our velocity value. We're going about 7.784 kilometers per second right now. Um, so to make, this, to make these numbers a bit more clear to us, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make our orbit a bit more um, elliptical for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to point my ship in the prograde direction. The prograde direction is the direction in which I am orbiting around. The retrograde direction is the direction opposite of which I'm ro rotating around. So if we look out here, oh, there's not much to see because it's dark outside. You can speed up to the, the daytime side. So I'm just speeding up time right now. So right now, as you can see, I'm, he I'm pointing in the same direction that I'm moving. I'll speed up time again. I'm pointing in the same direction that I'm moving. That's the prograde direction. So if I fire my rockets in the prograde direction, I should be able to increase the apogee of my, of my elliptical orbit. The apogee, of course, being the distance that's farthest from the planet. So if I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead, fire my rockets, and we'll watch, and watch my green circle. It's gonna start increasing and becoming less of a circle. So now, as you can see, I'm firing my rockets. At this point, I'm increasing my velocity at my point right here, and therefore that corresponds in a in a in a in a slow in a, in a smaller velocity at the opposite point at perigee. And so, of course, the, the um, circumference of the Earth will never change, but my orbit, my, ellip my orbit is becoming more and more elliptical. And look at my semi-major axis, it's now getting larger and larger. And my, pe my perigee and my apogee, of course, have to change correspondingly as well. So as you can guess, also, my, the point that I'm at right now is, in fact, at perigee, because I'm now closest to the Earth as possible. As I start moving along, as you can see how the green deviates from the, the gray one, I'm getting farther and farther away from the planet. So if we speed up time a little bit, as you can see, we'll see the planet start moving away from us. I'm just rotating views, that's why he's flipping around. And so I'm speeding up time, trying to show you that we're going to get farther and farther away from the planet and all that. So that's just fun to look at. And so as you can see, looking here, this green line designates where I am on the orbit right now. And um, that's all that you need to know for that. So here's the part where we start taking down values. All we need to do is Take different values of the radius. First of all, we need to know our semi-major axis, of course. The semi-major axis will never change, so we might as well go ahead and write that down as 10.48 megameters. And I just noted that on my pen and paper right next to me. You can do that yourself if you want to, but we're all going to put it into the computer when we're done with this. And we're and within the the best thing to do is to I'm going to pause it by doing Control P, and I'm going to no, go ahead and write down the values. I'm going to write down the radius, the RAD value, which is my distance from the, my point in orbit right there to the center of the planet, and that distance, that first distance is 11.07 um, megameters, and the corresponding velocity of that. The corresponding velocity is 5.829 kilometers per second. And so I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm going to get about five or six values, and then we can put it into the computer. All right, I just took down my last value, actually. And um, we can now go to the spectrum program, and, try to, and I'll show you what data I got. So I took a bit more than six and six or seven on data points because I saw that it wasn't doing so well, um, and um, that little gap right there may have a little effect on our data, but it did pretty well actually. We got an inverse um, power relationship, and that's exactly what we were looking for. And also, what I did was I verified 
one of our num I verified our numbers by um, plugging in the velocity into the formula that we got using Wolfram Alpha, which is a nice little calculator online, web-based, and um, got it right here. And I plugged in the numbers. I put g and the mass of the Earth, and I put two divided by the um, the distance, which was that value right there, the six six zero four zero zero, and it did. 2 divided by that minus 1 divided by the semi-major axis, which I noted down earlier. And we got a velocity of 9,091 9, meters. Um, the, the units are a little bit weird here just because, oops, I just clicked something. The, the units are a bit weird because it was using G, and there were no other units to correspond with it. But the, the point is that if we got 9,091, and the velocity that was recorded by the program was 9,092. So I think we did pretty well there, in my opinion, and we got an inverse power relationship. So I think that this equation is pretty valid in, with respect to where it's supposed to be used. So I hope everyone um, benefited from this and hopefully understood orbital mechanics just a little bit better than simply by reading through a textbook or listening to a lecture. Hopefully that helped everyone.